need you to do me a favor and get in this front cargo bay and clean it out. It doesn't look too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. Throw everything in a bucket or what? Yeah, just uh, throw all the aluminum on the floor. Mike will come by, Okay. take it to the pile. No problem. Then whatever trash, just set it straight down here so we don't get it all mixed up. It's all right, I get to make a lot of noise. They had me clear it out because I'm the shortest one in there. In the bunch, there's not enough standing room in there, so I'm the lucky one that gets to go in there and clean it out. Hey, my ladder! <laughs> I got you, bro. Whoa. One <laughs> drive. Guys, open the door. I am claustrophobic. In the high desert of California is a harsh, dry wasteland where airplanes go to die and a crack team of demolition experts who turn those jumbo jets into scrap. This is Arc Aerospace, six specialized operators from the School of Hard Knocks, and some seriously badass machines. On a demo pad of concrete six feet deep, they strip airplanes down to bare metal and recycle over a million pounds of aluminum every year. Out here, every day brings a new challenge. So every day starts with a wrecking plan. Every morning when we come in, we'll put some coffee on. I go through the morning meeting just to give them a heads up on what to expect during the day. You know, if it's a Monday, ask them how their weekend went uh, because I care. Morning, guys. It's a why, favorite. Why, uh, uh, why is it good? I said morning, guys. Uh, <laughs> the wrecking plan for today, at first, it would be uh, precision cuts. I'm waiting for Isaac from ABR to come by and let me know the specifics on this wing cut. I'm um, anticipating there's gonna be some window cuts on this also, so. There's no windows on it. Towards the back. <laughs> Both sides again? Or? Yeah, so. Got that big hole but, in the side on it. After that, you know, I mean, it's just, it's all about demo, you know? Mark will be no longer with us by the end of the day. <laughs> I was like, Mark. Huey, you'll be on the Bobcat, Sal, and Sammy. Get on the floor, I'll get on my freak, the T-Rex, chop the wings off and we'll, we'll handle it. Let's get it, let's do this. Freak. The 727, it takes about a week with uh, cuts, cleaning, wire, and then demo. It's about uh, a load and a half of aluminum. Well, imagine people recycle, uh, let's see, soda pop, soda cans, and uh, we do it on a larger scale. We do the entire aircraft. We have the only green pad in the world because they have the proper uh, engineered um, concrete and, and the retaining side to capture all the spill. Today, our aerospace has six companies. We're continually looking for different avenues to increase our revenue and our bottom line. Before we demo the aircraft, we normally do assessments. Is there anything else we can do? Like every yard, we can make uh, art or furniture out of the aircraft. Out there at the cutup pad, we get an order or two sometimes on, uh, on these aircraft that we get pulled in. Most of these orders that we get, um, they come from Isaac. I'm the manager at ABR. We run a fabrication shop turning old airplane parts into furniture and artwork. We'll do a walkthrough. He'll let me know what he's interested in, and I'll let him know if I can get it for him. The wing is about 25 feet long, 13 feet wide. These, these can be damaged, which is a good thing, because it'll help us lift it up or, or lift it down or whatever. Okay. But these right here, what we can't damage. You mess that cut up, a lot of money gone. Yeah. 
because the customers are very picky. It's a love and hate relationship, that's all. Sometimes it pinches and it wants a kick in your face. Right now I'm removing the cockpit seats per Isaac. I guess they make furniture out of these things too. The windows are getting uh, turned into some type of wall art. We have certain measurements that AVR wants. Mike is the guy to go to when you need a precision cut. Done with the outside cut, we're gonna go inside and meet the cuts. Huey's gonna line up the platform right under it, center it just right, and we're just gonna push the cut and it's gonna fall right onto the platform. I like it because we're left alone out there. You know, ain't nobody really bothers us. We just do our thing, work, and make that money for the company. Make these planes come on and disappear. <laughs> hey, how do I look? <laughs> Take a break, guys. Nah. <laughs> no, if, the, if the lighting is going to be a problem, just leave it. I'll take it off with the excavator. So. Alright, it's cool with me. Yeah. You know, if you can't do it out of a 55. Hey, who's talking to you? Yeah, go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> go to sleep, you old hag. <laughs> you know, you guys are all getting deported. Don't challenge me. I used to be in charge. Well, let's just say. I piss some people off. You want to take the sandbags out? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure we should do that. Uh, you know 727s are famous for, you know. The tail heavy. Yeah, they're tail heavy. That's why that's why we have the uh, jack screws. Yeah. That yellow jack screw that, that I guess we could do that, but then that's just a hassle. Never a dull moment with Dave. He's got his good days, his bad days. He's just a grumpy old man. We call Michael Caitlin. Sammy's the old toothless. Sal's the devil. Tony's Ms. Doubtfire. Yeah, they call me fat ass. Poor chop. Short guy. No neck. I tried to get him to call me Huey, but it doesn't work. Whatever, I just go with it. You know, it's all in fun. At the end of the day, I know my name. Watch, look, look at him try to open this right now. Look at, look at, look at. <laughs> you don't believe how big these these aircraft are, you know, until you're up close. The, the loudness, the banging, the actual ripping apart of this, this beautiful machine, it's unheard of. I've demoed hundreds of airplanes, and it never gets old. love to see them planes hit the ground because once they hit the ground we know that it's ours. I've been operating the Bobcat for about nine, ten months now. Still don't know what I'm doing.
you know, I come in, get all the big pieces out of the way so they have uh, room to maneuver around to get where they need to go to, to get the job done. When I first started, I never ran a forklift. I never ran a bobcat. In time, I just learned it all. I like the bobcat because it fits me. Small, short, stubby. They go together like peaches and cream. Huey, he hasn't quite perfected the bobcat yet, but, but he's, he's getting there. Um, I could at least trust him that he's not gonna hurt anybody or himself. The shears will hold uh, another whole animal. That's why they call it the T-Rex. That spine will have four different layers of aluminum that are half an inch thick and then bolted together. Very, very strong aircraft. The grapples won't break that up. So we use the shear to cut the wings off, cut the center tank up, cut the spine up. Sometimes the machine under pressure will walk on you. It'll go sideways, and once it's up in the air, that is 70,000 pounds of the machine at the end of the boom putting a bite on something. That's how much pressure it is. Yeah, we always have time for fun, and we joke around and stuff, but when it's time to work, we work, and uh, everybody helps each other out. Tavern. Bobcats overheating. Same thing as it was before? Yeah. Take off the thermostat or what? Yeah, might as well. So you're driving it too hard. <laughs> Working too much. Because they make you do everything with this. Give me a half inch or a 12, whatever. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Oh, man. No, that's that's oh, stuck. That's, uh, no. Anything breaks out there, I fix it you know, quickly. The machines are never down. I grew up in my dad's shop, so I'm fifth generation. Left me a lot of scars. A lot of scars. Did that just go up my nose? <laughs> I mean, you get burned everywhere you do. I mean, I've been burned in my eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and all those other places too, <laughs> you know? These little ones are more of a bitch because they've got these nuts behind them. Most of the bigger ones don't have nuts behind them. Take the cap off and I gotta take the center locks off. It's basically done. It's pretty, they're pretty easy taking tires off. Smack my knuckles with the hammer many times doing this right here. Back when I used to drink a lot more on the weeknights, I'd come in all hung over doing this. I hope our, our crew on the wrecking pad is doing a good job. Whether I'm not here or when I'm there, seems like they're working very hard and then they deliver the aircraft on time, they finish the job on time, so I hope they're doing a good job and when I'm not there. Here he oh, here he comes. Get ready, get ready, yeah, guys. He's coming. Here he comes. Get ready, here he comes. Woo! <laughs> 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 You're being a diva, so we thought you need a little cool down. Mark, <laughs> good, huh? And normally, I don't go into this room. They're called Man Cave. Hello. Uh, <laughs> hi, Janet. Hey, oh, hey. There you are. How are you doing? Doing, doing good. Oh. Oh, hey, Janet, how you doing? Hey, Tony. It's been a long time. I know, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Being fine, how about you? Chinches, huh? There's a lot of chinches here. Oh, you like those? I don't think I don't like it as much as you guys do. Oh, no? Um, not, I'm not excited. Look, it's not, I didn't know our dress code changed either. That was just hot. Uh, my shirt's right here. I'll put it back on. Janet is very nice. She's rarely out there. She rarely comes out. She's the owner. She, she has her cool side. If you just, as long as you're not screwing up and you're doing what you're, doing, doing what you're supposed to do, she can actually be pretty cool. Thank you.
that was the first time she's ever been in the man cave, so I was, I was caught off guard. When I'm out there at the cut-up pad and Janet comes by, we just talk about what's been going on, whether there's enough aircraft coming through or not enough, you know. I'm the lead supervisor out there on the pad. Uh, my boss is actually Pat. My name is Pat, and I am the boss of the cut-up crew out at the demo pad. Pat takes care of all the purchasing of airplanes and the scheduling, what comes on, what goes off, uh, cut orders, part orders, and whatnot. As long as you do your job and do it well, you're not going to have a problem with Pat. But the, the minute that you show her that you're not what you told her you are, she's all over you. She doesn't have a lot of time for stories. That would be Dave. Every FedEx plane that they bought, they had a drawing. And whoever's name was drawn out, they had an opportunity to name the plane, not after themselves, but after a child or a grandchild. And so every FedEx plane that there ever was has a name on it. What I'm doing is I'm clearing out all the installation, all the wires, anything that's in his way that could start a fire. We don't want that in there. See how that? Well, that, that will just, little embers, it'll keep burning in there. Say goodnight, Mark. You've flown many packages, but you'll fly no more. Huey knew we were going to set up a jacuzzi, but he didn't know what part, you know, of an airplane it was going to be. Because I told him, hey, uh, you know that big old round thing out there that's hollow in the middle? He's all, yeah, yeah. So I told him, hey, go outside. Go check it out. actually pretty nice. Come on in. <laughs> Woo! It's a very close family to us. It, it's a very tight circle and they kind of are rough on the edges, but they have a great heart and we kind of provide them another opportunity. Every single guy out there on the pad is an ex-con. We come from different sides of the law. Well, I used to be a police officer in my other life. And so now I'm working with a, a bunch of crooks. You just never know how life's going to be. But we're, we're here for a single purpose, and they're really good guys, and, and it's nice to call them my friends. You know, I was a troublemaker. I learned the hard way. I did some things. I did a lot of things that I'm not proud of, but I don't look to my past anymore. I just look straight now to where I'm a family man, married, uh, father, husband, and that's, this is my life now. You know, taking care of my family and being a man. This last time I was on vacation is what we call it. But I had a hard time. I'm tired of it. It's just time to change, you know. You know, I don't want to be homeless. I don't want to be asking people to borrow money. You know, I, I want my kids to have brand new shoes, you know, when they want them. Michael got me the job here. I uh, needed a full-time job because I was working for a part-time slumlord, and he got me in. I thank him for that every day. Every one of us is fighting for something. This job here is our second chance. Uh, I welcome it all. I like a challenge, I, and there's a challenge almost every day out here. When I talk to people, you know, in everyday conversations, whether it be, you know, the neighbor or somebody in the market, they're like, oh, what do you do for a living? And I tell them that I demo aircraft. You know, right there, they're like, oh, really? You know, and th that gives me a sense of pride because, I mean, I mean, who does that? You know what I mean? Not too many people. Hey, 
Huey's, uh, anybody seen Huey? Oh, yeah. fat boy, fat boy went to the shooter. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey. Get the forklift. Do this. Get the, get the forklift. Let's get this kid's ass. Yeah. Get pork chop. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna cry. Okay.